All right, so here we have the latest motor from Brother Javi. This one's the Speed Shield 2207.5 and various KVs. So I wanna thank Brother Javi for sending these motors for testing. So they've always been pretty good about sending all the latest releases for me to test and share the results with you guys. So thank you, Brother Javi. Hope to continue testing your motors. A lot of KVs on these motors, I imagine these are all production units since these are already out. So we'll go through the different KVs, 1750 KV on the low end, then 2150 KV, then 2400 KV. Then this one it doesn't have the same type of box, so I don't know if this is a prototype. Brother Hobby didn't mention much about this to me. Uh, so this one's 2544, then uh, 2700, 2800. And uh, that's not the last one. The last one is 3400. So once again, uh, Brother Hobby always trying to get all kinds of uh, different options for us to try. So that's one good thing about Brother Hobby. You know, they're always trying new stuff. On this case, a uh, very high KV. And just a little bit of an odd size on the height of the stator, just adding 0.5 millimeters to the height of a 2207 motor. So that's a 2207.5. Okay, so we'll crack open this box. They're gonna be the same uh, uh, motors, basically the same uh, casing on the motor. Uh, so we'll try this one and we'll try the, this one with the odd box. Uh, that's the 2800. So yeah, as you can see, it's basically the same casing, same, same base. So the only thing that's gonna change is the winding, of course, how many turns the motor has, and that's, as you know, that's what determines the KV value of the motor. And as you can see, they're continuing on the Marvel Universe theme. So this is Captain America, Speed Shield. They pay homage to one of the icons of comics and Captain America. Uh, so we would have the Avengers, uh, we had uh, Deadpool, and uh, I forget what other one uh, there is. So uh, the usual features that we've come to expect out of motors these days. This looks like a 16 by 16 pattern, so 16 all the way around. And I believe that's a 4x9x4 four by by four bearing, so I'll have to measure that when I crack open the motor. And shaft retaining screw with good size, it's a 2 millimeter driver fits in there so uh, not the 1.5 millimeter which is easy to round uh, so this one's easier to remove to loosen so that's good and a titanium shaft of course that's pretty much a given from brother hobby these days so they've been doing titanium uh, shafts for a long time and uh, 7075 aluminum casing and base and 52 magnets arc magnets of course and uh, looks like a single strand wire on the windings. All right, so let's get some weight on this motor, and that's with 155 millimeters of uh, wire. Uh, that's 20 gauge wire, so not that thick. And uh, that's 32 grams, so 155, if we cut it to 50, we'll be removing about that much wire. So that's about 2.2 grams. Let's measure that. Uh, so the motor comes in at 29.7. That's actually quite good weight for a 2207.5. The extra five, it's almost, you know, it's between a 2207 and a 2208 basically. So very good weight, I think, under 30 grams with the wires cut. So that's quite good. Brother Hobby has always made a lot of efforts in making light motors so that's quite good so i'll remove that shaft retaining screw hopefully it's not too tight and yeah with this size of screws with the two millimeter driver uh, there's usually no need to heat it up anymore it's when we had that small size screws, a uh, 1.5 millimeter driver. We had to uh, apply some heat with the soldering iron because otherwise you end up messing up the screw. So with this is a lot easier and you can remove it without 
messing up the screw so that's good so that comes right out and uh, enough uh, Loctite there too it's uh, pretty tight it's not gonna accidentally come off and there's the brass uh, washer so we'll we'll pull this apart and measure the stator and the bearing as usual so hopefully this pulls out easily and yeah usually brother hobby uh, there's no uh, not a lot of problem removing the bell they got really good tolerances so everything fits nice and tight it's like not overly tight and not loose at all so that's a, a really good thing okay so we'll have a closer look I'll get the magnifying glass for some close-ups uh, so here's the close-up of the bell and there's the uh, hollow, fully hollow titanium shaft uh, nicely machined as usual uh, curved magnets as you can see there and I can't feel a lip there on the ring on the bell ring uh, but there's plenty of epoxy uh, so here's the stator and as usual from Brother Hobby as you can see extremely nice windings uh, these things are basically a work of art and there you can see the NMB bearing uh, this one's the L94ZZ so that's a 4x9x4 four by by four bearing and that's the bearing we all like big and beefy these are nice because they take a lot of uh, abuse and uh, don't go bad as quickly so there's the base and all the wires are nicely tucked thin very close right there so one thing you do have to be careful of course is when you mount it you have to make sure you keep an eye on the screw you know make sure it doesn't punch through and mess up your windings there uh, because they're, they're pretty close right there but uh, that's the one of the advantages of uh, the naked bottom is uh, you can easily see how far the screw is uh, going so as long as you're careful you're not gonna damage that so, so that's one thing to keep in mind uh, so let's get some measurements on the stator height so that should be 7.5 millimeters so let's see so that's actually uh, uh, right on the money 7.5 millimeters and looks like 0.15 millimeter laminations on that stator so you know pretty much all the latest techno features on this motor and of course that's a nine millimeter bearing uh, as I showed you that that was marked there with NMB bearing uh, that's one of the uh, uh, well-known brands that are known for good quality it's pretty good I think these are Japanese bearings I believe and here we can see the air gap that's basically the gap between the face of the magnets and of the stator uh, so pretty tight so that should make for a very responsive motor so it's nice and tight uh, this one is the 2800 kV motor so I actually thought all the motors were basically the same just the windings the number of turns was the difference but actually on the 3400 KV motor I noticed this is the only motor that has uh, looks like that could be multi-strand wire as you can see uh, the difference on, on, on the wires they used uh, this one's a lot thinner so I'm sure that's multi-strand yeah, I can see some bundles of wire right there whereas this one uh, they're using um, larger gauge wire so uh, single strand uh, so 3400 kV that's gonna be interesting to see 
uh, these those on 4S and 5 inch pr props. I imagine that's the target uh, setup on these. Uh, but I, I imagine that's going to draw a lot of uh, amps on the thrust stand. Uh, but in the air, of course, the amps are a lot lower than on the thrust stand, up to 35, even 40%. So perhaps it's not going to be a test on the thrust stand that that is going to give you an idea of what uh, to expect. I don't because I don't know if uh, if I'm going to be able to run that on 4S and 5-inch props. It might be beyond uh, my uh, thrust stand specs, but we'll see. But I, I would imagine on 5-inch and 4S it should be okay. I think once uh, the props unload. I thought I'd try the 1750 first, so maybe I'll do the one of the high KVs next, 2800 or 3400. Hopefully it doesn't make my testing equipment go up in flames, so we'll see. So alright, uh, put this back on right here, and I'll tighten the screw, and always make sure you use uh, a thread lock when you take it apart. And uh, I've mentioned this before, I usually use uh, the purple one because that, that one doesn't, uh, doesn't act as crazy glue, you know, it's easier to remove. But you can use the blue one, the blue one is the next one in strength, I think, and it should be okay to remove. Alright, so let's, uh, let's put this on the thrust stand and get some numbers. Alright, so let's quickly look at the numbers for these speed shield 2207.5 3400kV. This came in uh, exactly at 3400kV as measured by my thrust stand. This is the highest kV version available for the speed shield. So kind of interesting to see what such a high kV motor in this size would yield with the typical props that I'm used to testing. So I thought I'd start with 3S. So I started with the low pitch props uh, because I knew it was going to be drawing quite a lot of amps and uh, the power supply I use is limited to just about 70 to 75 amps and then it triggers the auto shutoff uh, due to high amps. So actually I was able to run the 5043 on 4S but when I got to the 5045 I had to use a battery in parallel with the power supply so that it wouldn't trigger the uh, shutoff circuitry. Uh, same thing with the 5046 it was triggering the uh, auto shutoff so I had to use that battery. So pretty high amps uh, for these products props on 4S and uh, it seems to be doing just about what you would get on 6S with the 1750 kV so it almost looks like this is equivalent to a, a 1750 kV on 6S uh, for this low pitch 5 inch prop. With the 5046 it's quite up there with the amps so definitely you're gonna need a, a really good battery that is going to be able to take uh, this punishment. So these are going to be quite harsh on the batteries, but uh, you know, if you want to get 6S performance on 4S, this would 
be sort of the equivalent as far as uh, max thrust is concerned on 5 inch uh, so that's comparable to that uh, 6s setup and the biggest prop i tried were these two but on 3s because 4s would probably melt my power supply and it would be way too much for my setup so on 3s only uh, 6040 uh, 1600 and 1660 so it looks like uh, at this kv as you can see there's not much difference when you go on 4s the increase in uh, max thrust is just barely uh, noticeable here and the amps do increase uh, so it looks like it's getting to the limit of the capability of the motor uh, to spin faster on the thrust stand of course uh, when you're flying as the prop unloads there'll be a difference of course because the props are going to be unloaded so the higher pitch is going to come into play and you'll be able to feel it once in the air it should pull better uh, when we're on the thrust stand on static conditions uh, that's where the motors hit the wall basically uh, especially at this high kv so as you can see here uh, the increase is not a lot and the amps as you can see they they just keep increasing and the uh, the thrust increases is just marginal uh, so that seems to be hitting the wall right there as far as making power but again like i said once you're in the air the props are going to be unloaded so the higher pitch slightly more aggressive props are going to come into their own and they're going to be able to uh, to push more air and to uh, spin faster possibly i haven't seen any actual flight reviews or people commenting if the different props make a difference or if they're actually reached the limit as far as the motor being able to to spin them any faster so definitely a specialized motor on this kv uh, definitely for some special specific setups it's going to be interesting to see how people end up using this motor and how it compares to 6s 1750 kv and how the batteries manage to handle this all right so that's the thrust test results for the 3400 kv i still have a couple of other kv values to test so keep an eye out for those in the future uh, sorry it's uh, been a little bit slow getting this test out but i'm just trying to find the time to uh, run the test and do the videos so thanks for watching and until the next one